What is up you guys, Westside here, and today we're gonna be talking about color. Color correcting, color grading, the differences between the two, LUTs, how to use LUTs, what exactly are they. Um, Johnny FPV just put out that LUT pack last week and there's been a little bit of controversy over the price. I don't think it's worth what he was charging, but that's just me. Um, I see a lot of people happy with their results, so more power to you if you wanna spend money on LUTs, that's awesome. I'm actually gonna be giving away a huge LUT pack at the end of this video, so stay tuned. Let's dive right in. All right, you guys, so we got some clips on our timeline here. And first things first, let's get into what color correcting versus color grading is. So color correcting is Say you film in RAW or flat, if you are filming on a GoPro, what flat does is it drops some levels so you can add a little bit in post and you need to fix that. And a lot of people think that, oh yeah, everybody says record in flat on a GoPro and then they upload their footage without doing any color correction. They might even add a color grade, but they will not color correct. Color grading is when you add a specific tone or color or theme to your footage. All right, and we're gonna, we're gonna correct this footage and then we're gonna grade it. So we'll start with just this shot right here. We're gonna come over here to our Lumetri panel. We wanna to go to our basic correction. And right here, I already have a correction done. We're gonna go ahead and reset that and see how it looks just really dull and flat. So we're going to first bring up our Lumetri scopes, which is up here in the top left corner. And what this does is it gives us a readout of the colors and the values, how bright and how dark everything is. Here at zero, this is black. 100 this is white so see this real bright it's almost white peak right here that's what this peak is over here on your lumetri scopes and so zero is all the way black 100 is all the way white we want to kind of bring our whole range down a little bit just to kind of give us a more darkened feel so what we're going to do is we're going to drop our blacks and you can see all the bottom layers start to to go down so see how all the colors are piling up here in the bottom left you don't want that, so you want to bring him just above to where it's not touching that line. That should be fine for the blacks, and we're going to do the same thing for the whites. So you want to come over here to your whites, and just kind of look what it's doing. Sun is a little bit hard because you kind of want it bright, but we can, we can just make a little bit touch up there. That doesn't look too bad at all. You might even just, just a hair. Like I said, the sun you can kind of play with and overexpose just a little bit, you know, and it really is just sit here and mess with it until you think it looks like it's supposed to. By meaning look like it's supposed to, it shouldn't look fake. Like this is some pretty pink color, but that's without any posts so far. So even when we do add a lot, it's gonna really bring out that pink. Okay, so we have our whites and our blacks. Looks like we're at negative three on both. And now we can shift the whole range. So we're gonna take our shadows and just kind of bring it down. And again, we're gonna watch that zero line so we don't go too low. And see how it's starting to just look too dark. We wanna bring it back up. That looks pretty good there to me. And you can mess with your highlights and your contrast if you choose to, but you don't always need to. You can get a lot of the effects from contrast from just adjusting your whites, blacks, and shadows. Highlights help when there's sky and you wanna adjust the detail on the sky. We will get to that in just a bit. So that is color correcting, and now we're gonna color grade this footage. So you don't wanna drop a LUT right here on the input LUT basic correction. So we're gonna come down here to, to creative, and we are going to, so we're gonna click on look, and it's getting a little cut off because it's on my other screen. I wanna go to browse, and I have a whole bunch of LUTs right here that I will be sharing with you guys. So I wanna show you the ones that I just recently acquired. This is the Sam Colder LUT bundle. It actually has um, a bunch of different creators. Some of my favorites, Ben TK, Chris Rogers, uh, Matt Como. These guys, for a week only, they all collabed, all 24 of them, and they put out a huge LUT pack and it was, what, $70? And that's for 24 different creators. And that's why I don't agree that Johnny FPV's LUT pack is 150 for the pro even 60 for just the gopro luts that's outrageous in my opinion i mean each of these packs right here has multiple look there's seven right there and there's three different files times 24 creators for 70 dollars or you get what i think it's 10 or 12 in the gopro pack so you know like johnny i, I appreciate you dropping the price on 
your GoPro pack, whatever, for 60 bucks, but it's it's still outrageous for the average, you know, FPV editor. $60 is, is a big, you know, a big chunk of change just for a little bit of color. So I want to be dropping a link to all of these LUTs in the description of this video, just for you guys. So let's pick one. We're going to go over here to Chris Rogers. He's one of my favorites. And we're just going to kind of read what's going on here. He's got an urban one, tropics. He does a lot of um, water stuff. So these might not be the best for this pink stuff, but we are going to give him a try. So we're going to check out the go-to, just the go-to. See, that's got some nice teals in the shadows and some nice oranges in the highlights. But again, that looks fake. So a lot of people think you just drag a lot and leave it. Nope. What you need to do is come over here, drop the intensity to no more than 40. I usually stick 25 to 30. As I edit more videos, the lower this number gets. When I started editing, I was like 100% LUT, and that just doesn't look good. So please, please don't overdo your LUTs. 30 is a good base to start with. This doesn't look fake. It looks like this could actually be a scene. And that right there is how to use a LUT. That's one way if you want to keep it basic and color grade within the clip, or we can do this a different way. Remove all attributes, and we're going to start over. This time we're going to add an adjustment layer. This is normally how I do it because I'm usually color grading more than one clip at one time, and this just makes life a lot easier. So we're going to create a new adjustment layer, drag it over to our timeline. So we have our clip color corrected. Now our color grade we're going to do on our adjustment layer. So once again, we're going to click on our adjustment layer, come over here to our creative tab inside our Lumetri panel. And again, we're going to find a nice LUT we want to use. Let's try tropical water. Again, see, this is too much. So what we're going to do now is bring it down and 30 is a good base. And now what's happening is after we, we're going to mute this track. So there's no color grade on it right now. But after we color grade this clip, we then color grade this clip and the next one and the next one. And what we can do is we can match our color throughout our clips. And then we have this adjustment layer with our color grade and we just highlight it. And now our color grade is across all our footage. However far you drag this adjustment layer, your color grade is already done. These clips still need color corrected, <clears throat> but they have a grade on them. See, and, and it's very minimal what this LUT is doing. You can see the difference here. This is raw out of the camera. This is with a little bit of, this is 30% LUT, but it definitely, it sharpens the edges. It brings out the colors a little bit more. So less is more, you guys, remember this. All right, so now we're just gonna go through and uh, let's color correct all these. We're gonna drag our adjustment layer back off. So this one's gonna be an interesting one because there's not much color. So we can kind of manipulate it a little bit more. The more color in a shot, the less post manipulation you can do because it's gonna look fake. But we can, let's see, we can bring our shadows down. We can drop our blacks because there's really not any blacks in here. Our contrast just to hair, whites we can bring down. See, and you, your highlights are what's gonna keep your image from blowing out. Look at all that detail that we just brought out just by adjusting the exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. This is still not color grading, we are color correcting right now. Here's a good one, lots of different colors, <clears throat> a little bit of people so we can see the skin tones. So, and also you have this auto button over here. And if you don't feel comfortable with color correcting right away, at the very least hit auto and see what it does. See this tree kind of gets a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna bring my black. So it doesn't always do a good job, but it's a, it's, it kind of helps you get in the right direction. You can see what it wants to do. So we're gonna bring our blacks up just a hair. We might go negative three. Nothing seems blown out to me. Now let's see what this LUT looks like because people in LUTs always look different. 
See, and this lot we could even possibly bring up just a hair. I might even choose a different one. See, this is like way too much. Here's a hundred. That's no, no lot. This is a nice teal and orange light. You can see as I drag it, it gets a little bit more teal. The roofs get a little bit more orange. So let's look, let's look through some other ones. Sunset, a little bit more warm. Let's go maybe check um, Ben TK's LUTs. He's really good. See, these are all for Sony logs. So these are all camera footage, which I'm shooting on the cam uh, Sony camera. See what his teal and orange looks like. See, this is 100%. That's way, 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 way too much because it's made for um, a raw, raw image. So we can drop this down. And now you can see it's starting to look more real. Up here, it looks fake. You guys, you do not want your footage to look like that. So drag it back way down. And when you think it's enough, go a couple more points. Like I said, 30 looks pretty good here. Let's see what the rest of our clips look like with that color. See, this one's a little... A little bit too much color so what we're gonna do instead of adjusting our LUT across our whole adjustment layer we're just gonna adjust this clip we're gonna back down our saturation just a hair and maybe go back and adjust our color a bit our shadows now look a little bit too dark reset those you bring back the exposure I'm gonna up the contrast and again we'll go to like 98 that looks better This one's a little bit too dark with that color, color grade on it. So we're gonna bring our shadows back up. And our blacks. And even though these all are different shots, our colors are starting to match. If you look at like the blue tones, those blue teal tones kind of stay throughout each clip. You can see the teal blue and the clouds over here in the, the water, even here in this building. So we have a nice clean color grade. So this is how to use LUTs, how to color grade, how to color correct your footage. So a LUT, AKA a lookup table, has actually been around before color and color editing. Basically it's an algorithm. So it's a lookup table. It looks up particular values and inputs those values in whatever software you're using. So it basically takes preset values. So all these LUTs that Johnny's charging $150 for, you can do inside Premiere. You can use your color matches, your curves, your HSL secondaries. All this stuff are tools to adjust the color and you can do this inside Premiere. So this HSL secondary is pretty cool little tool. We can grab our eyedropper right here and we're gonna select this blue color and we can select the lightness that it selects, the saturation, and the hue. It's given us a preview of what it's gonna affect. So now we wanna change it, say let's just get crazy and change it green. You can see it's not changing the whites, it's just changing the color. So say you wanna change just one color of the grass or something, or your rocks are too saturated, what you can do is you can come over here eyedropper say this is an oversaturated rock or tree or grass you just click it come down here drop your saturation and it'll just drop the saturation of just those selected colors and say you need to raise that value to get more of that color you can come over here and just drag these out and it's gonna let it pick more of that lightness and darkness same with the saturation same with the hue there's only really one hue in this so it's, it's not showing that big of an effect but this HSL secondary is an awesome tool for color. The color wheels in match, we can do the match. So you come over here to comparison view. So say we wanna match this color to this color. These aren't the best clips to um, show you this on, but it will give you an idea of what it does. Say you have, maybe the clouds are coming by and one of your shots was a little bit darker or a little bit brighter. What you can do is, is use this color match to kind of help correct that imbalance. So we have this one right here, which is our current clip selected, and we're gonna match this clip. So we come over here, apply match. So what it's doing is dragging the colors from this to this one. 
and as you can see it kind of matched those pink and blue tones. This is a super handy tool also. Alright you guys, this has been Color with Westside. I hope you guys enjoy. Until next time, Westside out.